What's up everybody, Mike Lazarecki here, and today we're talking about audio, and a sweet little device that can take your audio from sounding awful like this, to sounding nice and crispy like this. Let's do this. So to start things out, I'm sure you guys have heard before just how important audio is to any video project that you're working on. If you haven't heard this before, let me tell you, audio is maybe more important than the image on your video. The truth is that I'd rather watch a video that was filmed on a couple of generations old iPhone but has great audio than something that was filmed on an Aria Alexa that has horrible audio. It doesn't matter if it's a YouTube video or a client job, your audio has to be solid. Audio is one of the key elements. It's one of the most important tools you have to tell your story. This is true because excellent audio allows the viewer to become immersed in your video content and really be able to kind of find themselves being pulled into the story or the message that you're trying to create. On the other hand, really poor audio has exactly the opposite effect. Bad audio is incredibly distracting. It takes away from the message that you're trying to convey with your video and it can turn your audience off so badly that they just stop watching the video altogether. So in order to get good audio for our videos, it's important to make sure that we're investing in the right equipment for the job. This of course means microphones, boom stands, recorders, more microphones, windscreens, dead cats, lavalier systems, the list goes on. Well, recently I came across what I think is probably one of the most versatile pieces of audio equipment on the market today, especially if you're a run and gun content creator like a YouTuber or even a wedding videographer. This thing is super versatile. Enter the Zoom F1. The Zoom F1 is a newer design from Zoom. Now, I say newer because it's actually been out since 2018, so it's been out for a little while. However, it's not something that I had really seen marketed all that hard, and I'm kind of surprised about that based on what I have experienced with it so far. So anyway, you look at it, it's definitely quite new to my gear list. In its standard configuration, the F1 is sold as a standalone lavalier recorder with a really nice high quality lapel mic to go along with it. And in that form factor, it really does work very nicely. The body of the recorder is really small and seemingly quite durable, and it can be worn on a belt by using the included belt clip or by feeding a strap through these two crossbars here. Also, the microphone cable is plenty long enough to route through clothing or even route around a backpack onto a backpack strap without really having any problems with it pulling because the cable's too short. In addition to that, for added security, the F1 and the microphone that comes with it feature a threadlock type connector for the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. So when you plug this guy in, you can thread that right in there and there's no way you're gonna accidentally pull that microphone out of the recorder during recording, which of course could totally ruin a shoot. Now I know that wireless lavalier systems have become extremely popular with systems like the Rode Wireless Go, the Asden Pro XD, and the Rode Link Filmmaker Kit. I myself still use the Asden Pro XD wireless kit when the situation calls for it, and that wireless option is, of course, very nice to have. However, I do find that these wireless systems occasionally like to throw you a curveball in the form of transmission or signal problems. Most of the time, those kinds of things happen at the worst possible moment. Like in the middle of a wedding ceremony where obviously you can't do anything to stop and reshoot. Hey now I've had this happen with both the Wi-Fi based transmission systems and the radio signal transmission systems. And the truth is you can never really predict when you're going to end up having some kind of signal interference. So that is one downside to using the wireless system instead of something like the F1, which is a self-contained recorder where you don't need to worry about it trying to transmit the audio signal back to a camera or a recorder. The other nice thing about the F1 and one of the reasons why I think it's just so damn versatile is that this tiny little recorder is also compatible with all of Zoom's add-on capsules, meaning that you can add everything from a shotgun microphone to a dual XLR adapter to this tiny little recorder and be able to actually use this in multiple different situations as a primary audio recorder. Because of this, I've really considered replacing my current setup with my H4n with this little guy and just getting the different capsules and making it so that I have sort of an all-in-one solution for all of my run and gun stuff. 
As for the audio quality, I think it's excellent. There's a reason that indie filmmakers have trusted Zoom products for their filmmaking audio for such a long time. The audio sounds clean with a pretty low noise floor, and the recording options allow you to record WAV files at up to 96 kilohertz at 24 bit. So as an example, my normal setup for more studio-based type stuff like this is to be using a Zoom H4n recorder that's plugged into a Boya BV PVM1000 shotgun microphone, which by the way is probably the nicest budget shotgun mic that I've found over the past several years. I've been using it for like six years and I still think it sounds really good. So let's do an audio comparison between that setup and the Zoom F1. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the lapel mic for the F1 and we'll do a quick comparison of the audio quality between the Zoom H4 n and the zoom f1 with the lavalier mic all right so i'll put this guy right there now if you aren't already i would recommend at this point to put on some decent quality headphones so that you can actually hear the audio difference i don't know how well it's going to translate through youtube but i'm going to do my best to make sure that you can hear what the different characteristics are at least with headphones on you can get the most out of the comparison so in order to compare the audio between the two different systems I'm going to go ahead and just read the features list off of the back of the Zoom F1 box, and then I'll play it back through each system separately so that you can hear how the exact same audio sounds through the two different configurations. Okay, here we go. Features at a glance. Two-channel audio recorder. Records to microSD and microSDHC cards. One-touch button controls. Records audio up to 96 kilohertz and 24-bit. Compatible with Zoom microphone capsule system. Wearable directly on belt or with BCF-1 belt clip accessory. 1.25 inch monochrome LCD. For wedding videography, interviews, indie filmmaking, and more. Features at a glance. Two channel audio recorder. Records to microSD and microSDHC cards. One touch button controls. Records audio up to 96 kilohertz and 24 bit. Compatible with Zoom microphone capsule system. Wearable directly on belt or with BCF-1 belt clip accessory. 1.25 inch monochrome LCD. For wedding videography, interviews, indie filmmaking, and more. So as you can see, or in this case here, the audio quality is excellent through both of these arrangements. What's really nice is the audio sounds really similar between the two setups, which makes this a great combination for doing more studio-based stuff, or in the event that you're out running around, you are able to kind of mesh the two different audio systems and get pretty consistent sounding audio. Now, there are a couple of negatives to discuss here. First, the audio record level is broken up a little bit weirdly. Rather than having a scale in like kind of a percentage from zero to 100, instead you have an auto levels and then nine different steps of volume and the way that they're labeled is like low low plus medium minus medium medium plus and then there's high minus high high plus and high plus plus which uh i feel like they could have just gone zero to ten with an auto would have probably been a lot more simplistic and easier for people to understand what they were dealing with so that's a little bit weird the battery and memory card doors are among the most irritating designs that i have ever seen specifically with the location of the memory card door it makes it really difficult to get the card in and out of the device also the battery door can be a little bit of a pain to close after you open it up and also it would have been really nice if the screw that attaches the belt clip to the back of the device would have been a quarter 20 mount instead of whatever this tiny little screw is that they used on this belt clip that would have made it so it was a lot more easily mountable in a customizable way to different camera rigs, or at that point, even a boom pole if you happen to have the shotgun mic capsule attached to the recorder at that time. As it stands, it uses a smaller screw, and the only way to really mount this to anything is to purchase Zoom's proprietary shock mount, which can't really be used for anything else, so that makes this very versatile recorder a little bit less versatile in my opinion. So overall, I really love the tiny form factor, the flexibility through add-ons, and the excellent audio quality that I'm getting out of the Zoom F1. Add to that that it's even more affordable than a lot of the other audio solutions out there, coming in at a base price of only about $170. At that point, I can kind of overlook some of the goofy little quirks that I mentioned a second ago. In case you are interested in picking up one of these Zoom F1 field recorders, I left a link in the description below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Zoom F1 down in the comments. Hit that thumbs up button if you want to see more content like this on my channel and consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week.
Later. 